Hello and good evening. My name is Tim Heimgartner. This is my capstone project report for HTML 475 titled An Institutional Guide and Suggestions for the Development of a PERT. What is a PERT? PERT is an acronym that stands for Pulmonary Embolism Response Team. A PERT provides a rapid evidence-based multidisciplinary approach to treating patients who suffer from acute PE. A PERT consists of a collaborative group of physicians and hospital stakeholders whose main objective is to improve patient outcomes via reduction in treatment delays, lowering patient mortality, and reducing hospital length of stay. PE has long been called the silent killer. Pulmonary embolism occurs when a clot dislodges, typically from the deep vein near lower limb, travels to the lungs, causes an arterial blockage, and ultimately leads to heart swelling. Here are some PE statistics. PE kills more patients in the United States and the United Kingdom than AIDS, cancer, and car accidents combined. Pulmonary embolism is the third leading cause of cardiovascular mortality, falling behind stroke and myocardial infarction. An estimated 300,000 people die from PE in the U.S. each year. PE is the leading cause of inpatient mortality in the U.S., meaning the patients that die while in the hospital. 20% of PE patients die suddenly from a PE, a large one, and there's over 600,000 cases of PE in the U.S. each year. Given these startling figures, the question is, can we do better? PE patients can present with a wide array of symptoms, some that even mimic those of a heart attack, which is why it's important that we risk stratify PE patients into three separate categories. You have minor or low risk PE, which accompanies a good portion of the chart at 55%. These patients have a good prognosis and low mortality rate. They're usually seen in the emergency department, given an oral anticoagulant and discharge sent home. On the other spectrum, you have the massive PE patients. These patients comp, uh, consist of only 5% of the overall PE chart, and they are extreme risk of dying, with 58% of them dead at three months. These patients often present to the hospital with cardiogenic shock, severe hypotension, and are often put on a machine for ventilation. It is the submassive PE group, or intermediate risk group, which has been a hotly debated topic which is within the medical community. They debate over how best to treat this patient population, and that's met with conflicting opinions. So why is there a need for a PERT? PE patients are an underserved patient population in the medical community, which, with much of the attention given to cardiac illnesses such as myocardial infarction and stroke. To date, the ideal strategy for treating QPE is a hotly debated topic. Treatment strategies vary widely from institution to institution with no real formalized protocol on how best to treat PE. I found there was no real form of standardization within hospital institutions on how to treat PE, which is why I decided to do my capstone project on PERTs. In most cases, PE is underdiagnosed and undertreated. A PERT would resemble much the same as other rapid response teams, such as those for stroke or for a cardiac STEMI program. A PERT streamlines the decision-making process throughout a patient's care pathway and serves to eliminate physician bias by having an agreed-upon formalized protocol. A PERT's three main goals are to one, rapidly assess, diagnose, and provide comprehensive treatment for PE patients. Two, to process and consider a full range of medical, surgical, and endovascular therapies. And three, provide a long-term follow-up for these patients post-discharge. A PERT simplifies the care pathway for patients suffering from PE by creating continuity amongst the providers via a systems-based approach of PE-specific protocols, algorithms, and policy changes. The steps to developing a PERT program. So one must understand that implementing a large institutional change like that of a system-wide PERT would be no easy task. Therefore, I've compiled a list of steps to developing a PERT that I believe would help healthcare organizations during the early formation of their program. The first step would be assembling a steering committee. This would be finding a physician champion who's gonna be the key person in developing the group and identify the stakeholders, whether they be critical care, pulmonology, cardiology, 
who would be want who would want to be participants in the PERT. Well, the, the second step is going to be develop a charter. This charter is going to define the goals, vision, metrics, milestones, and what the PERT membership will entail. After that, the group will establish a PERT activation process. What number will the people call when they suspect a patient with PE? Will it be a 24-hour a day, seven-day a week service? And who will sit on that call team if someone does make the call? Three would be to develop a PE risk stratification chart and PE treatment algorithm. This would be a collaborative agreement between all stakeholders on the PERT team. It would be a consensus agreement amongst all physicians within the institution, and it would be implemented system-wide. The last step would be to establish an ongoing quality initiative plan, which would track outcomes, look at performance review, do case reviews, and look at ways to improve the PERT. On the right of this slide is an example from the University of Florida as to what a PERT activation system may look like. Some of the requirements for a PERT activation are that there must be a designated PERT call number, must have assigned members who are on the call team, and there must be a virtual meeting platform such as Zoom or GoToMeeting that is HIPAA compliant where the physicians can all meet to discuss the case. Ideally, the PERT would like to meet within the first 90 minutes of the PE presentation to make a clinical decision on how that patient should be treated. There's important patient information that needs to be obtained from the PERT team in order to make this clinical decision, such as demographics, past medical history, current medications, and allergies. Importantly, they need to have a CT angiogram or echocardiogram that diagnoses the pulmonary embolism. They're also gonna look at symptoms and the hemodynamics, heart rate, and oxygen saturation. This is what a PE risk stratification chart may look like. Patients are risk stratified according to certain vital signs, imaging, and hemodynamic information. In a well-formed PERT, these risk stratification charts may be printed on cardstock and distributed amongst providers in the hospital system that they can refer to in the event they encounter a PE. If anything, the risk stratification chart helps promote PE awareness and helps with clinically diagnosing the disease. Without the structure of a PERT, decision-making as to the care of a PE patient may look something like this. Chaotic with no real definitive treatment pathway and no real standard, standardized protocol or algorithm. A PERT is only as good as the tools it has in its armamentarium, which is why it is important for a PERT to understand what PE treatment options and resources are available by the providers at their institution and which ones are best suited for each PE patient. These treatment strategies may vary from the basic conservative strategy of anticoagulation or heparin to a more invasive approach such as open surgical embolectomy. Newer, more advanced thrombus reducing strategies may be available such as the popular catheter directed thrombolysis and mechanical suction thrombolysis. These percutaneous or catheter-based therapies have garnered interest because of the limitations of both anticoagulation and systemic thrombolysis and the risks associated with open surgical repair. Implementation of a PE treatment algorithm like the one I formulated on this slide can serve as a playbook for the various options clinicians on the PERT have at their disposal when selecting the proper therapy. This PE algorithm can serve as a guide for hospitals looking at developing their own. As you can see, the algorithm appears in a flowchart form, depicting the three PE categories, minor, submassive, and massive. From there, clinicians are instructed on what important information is needed to progress them towards treatment. Finally, a treatment is recommended based on the above listed factors in the algorithm. This algorithm removes any guessing variable from the equation providing clinicians with a consensus recommendation on how best to treat PE and the various different therapies that are available at the institution. Although PE programs are a new institutional concept, their successes can be demonstrated via certain measurables such as improved patient outcomes and increased PE disease state awareness throughout the hospital or network. Successes can be tracked by a quality surveillance program which looks at these benchmarks of data. 
As an example, this graph from Mass General depicts and demonstrates a major increase in PERT activations post-launch of their program, likely due to the disease state awareness and hospital promotion of the program. The main goal for my capstone project was to simplify the PE program developmental process for hospital leadership by providing them this quick guide sheet and detailing the steps for how to go about assembling a PERT. Because of the paucity of PE resources, this guide can easily be disseminated to hospitals that are looking to form their own PERT, and it serves as a framework from which they can formulate their own program. In conclusion, as healthcare organizations look to remain competitive in today's market by offering their patients an outcomes-based value approach to medicine, hospital administrators are discussing how PE response programs can bolster the quality of their patient care services and outcomes. Both patients and providers benefit from a PERT's multidisciplinary collaborative model of care, which streamlines the decision-making process. I hope this capstone project and the guides I formulated assist future healthcare organizations in the formation of their PERT program. Thank you.